Well, the joint is, it's our farm too. We've earned your cushion. Oh, how are you? Are you alright? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm looking forward to the gig. It should be good. It's been um, it's been a long stretch on the tour so far. I've never done five gigs in a row. Mm -hmm. So we're resting the voice and all that on the honey and lemon off the drink, mm -hmm. off all the tabs. But it's good. It's good. Um, it's the first interview I've done on the tour as well. So let's hope I conduct myself accordingly. Right, start off with then. Who or what sort of influenced your style when it comes to clothes, music, all that sort of stuff? Is there anything that sort of sticks out to you in your memory? Um, right, okay, so the, the, the music thing is very much, you know, Paul Weller, Noel Gallagher, Bob Dylan, all that kind of stuff, which is what I was kind of brought up on from being a kid. A cocktail or whatever. I suppose you do that, don't you, as a kid? You get into what your mum and dad are listening to. Oh, and yeah. I was fortunate enough that my dad was into his well and his yeah. racist and all that. So I suppose that's where that came from. Clothing was a little bit different. Um, you know, bang into the whole football casual scene and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. They, you know, they go to the matches with, the, with, like, with my pals and all that, your Stone Island, your, 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 your casual clothes. So I suppose it's just a little bit of a mix of the two, man. But, the, you know, the, I suppose Nolan and stuff was a, was a cool dude when he was, uh, when he was in his yeah. like, Stone Island and stuff a few years ago. So yeah, just picked up little bits and bobs from everyone. But I, I am in a, although I'm not wearing any, a little bit. A little bit off saying this, I'm not wearing any Adidas today, but I am at like the Adidas trainers and we still yeah. in Jack and Yeah. Sort of comes with the territory anyway, don't it, with this sort of music, I think. Yeah, it does. You've got to be you've got to be careful not to be too cliche, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I like to balance it out a little bit. Obviously working with the likes of sort of Pete Doherty and stuff, mm -hmm. taking on his style of like desert boots and all yeah. that kind of stuff. You just whatever looks cool man. Whatever I look fit as fucking, <laughs> that's what I wear. That's it. Yeah. Go with the flow. Um, what's your earliest and fondest memory when it comes to football or like Newcastle um, football teams like specifically? Probably my first ever game, man. Me, I, me, me father took us to my first game while playing at home at Stoke, I think it was about 2007, 2008. I remember we were going 2 0 up at half time and I was thinking, I mean, it's great support in Newcastle, do you know what I mean? What a great team to put. <laughs> and then in true Newcastle fashion, we like threw it away in the second half, and I think we drew 2 2. And it was like going home with my father and just like, like getting off the bus and that, like holding hands, walking down Aww. to the tower. Just, just lovely memories like that, man, and just knowing that you're in for a life of shit football. <laughs> but it's all changing now. It's all changing oh, now. Oh, yeah. Richest club in the world. That's... Um, what's one artist or song in your playlist that you think would surprise people? Um, a little bit of Sam Cooke, you know, I was born by the oh, river, cool. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. A little bit of soul. Bit, yeah. Um, who else? I don't know, there is a little bit of Sam Cooke in there, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to disclose any more than that. What's been one of your favourite memories of touring so far in your touring career? Uh, well, this is my first ever headline tour. Mm. So I've never been a headline tour before. Yeah. This is amazing having, you know, it, it, some of these venues, for instance, where we are today in the Joiners, I first supported here in 2019. And, um, Who are you supporting? I support a band called Bang Bang Romeo, which mm -hmm. was my first. I literally just got signed. Uh, I hadn't done many gigs. Noel was like just starting praise and all that kind of stuff and he helped out getting on a tour and all that. You know, a few years later in, in, in hard work and kind of here we are. It's the same way, you know, we done a big show in London at, 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 um, at a venue in King's Cross and it was there. I've supported there twice and you just think, it's probably going to be five years before I get here and then, you know, six months later yeah. you're doing it. It's, so it's, it's pretty weird, like, but then the best memories have came from, you know, being on tour like the Libertines and, you know, I got to spend a few dates with Paul Weller, which was amazing. I sat down and had a fucking sirloin steak with Paul Weller. That was just, <laughs> like, that was just ridiculous. Do you know that what I mean? Just insane. the coolest bloke I've ever met. And you almost feel that I was sat there and I almost forgot how to use a knife and fork because I was just like <laughs> trying to play it so cool and I'm just hammering away at chips and I just think I'm sort of like such an idiot. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Where did you go for that? Uh, well, he's got his catering team and stuff and you get that level. So it's like mm, yeah, true, a big, 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 big catering yeah. tent and yeah. Paul's just kicking about. Do you mind if I sit here? If you, if you must. <laughs> well, that's my next question. Talk to us about sort of supporting and playing with Noel Libertines and how that all sort of came about. Well, the Noel gigs came about through the relationship and all from a few years ago. Yeah. Um, we've just stayed in touch and he's helped out with a few gigs. He's great, Noel. He's a lovely bloke. He gave me a little shout out in uh, in Wales, which was honestly the best high I've ever had in life, which yeah, was ridiculous. He, uh, he went, this next one's for Andrew, you Jordy cunt. <laughs> he proceeded to play half the world away, which was, uh, That's it sick. was just, yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, Gigamanor was amazing. It was 
it's always nice to see as well. And uh, the Paul Weller shows were amazing. Going away with the Libertines, it, it's it's great because you know what, it, my crowd is um, is very much the Noel influenced crowd or the US yeah. influenced crowd of like you know men and women you know in their mid to late starting their mid twenties to late thirties. You know, we were beginning to get the younger demographic now, which is great young lads jumping around the two tops. But predominantly, you've got the ex Oasis fans and all yeah. that kind of stuff, and people who are influenced by by nineties music or people that are influenced by singer songwriter stuff. So then going to jump on the Libertines gigs, it's yeah. still like young lads and young lasses going mad. So it was nice to go and play to a different crowd and try and steal some of their fans, if you will. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I love touring anyway. I'll, I'll tour anybody, but it's always nice when you when you're supporting legends in the, in the music scene. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, of course. Right, back to football. Where to see Newcastle United in a couple of years' time, given that they've just been, you know, British as a club in the league, didn't they? Taking over the world. That's yeah. where we'll be in a few years. We'll be taking over the world. The best thing about Newcastle at the minute is the steady growth. Mm. So we haven't, listen, we're £320 billion, pounds, regardless of financial fair play. We can work ways around buying people that we want to buy. Do you know what I mean? The money isn't an object for Newcastle anymore. But we're not going out and we're not spending 200 million on the best players in the world. Or 90 million on a centre half is a risk. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're buying players that are steadily going to improve the team. Players like Kieran Trippier, who we needed as a leader. You know, Bruno, who's, who's, who's adapted into that midfield role amazingly. You know, bringing in people like Alexander Isak is a statement, but he's not somebody who's a proven striker just yet. Do you know what I mean? So it's good to see that we're bringing in players like that. And I think within, you know, four or five years' time, those players will be virtually taken over the Premier League. But in terms of people to buy, it's got to be a couple of youngsters out there, man. It's mm. got to be a couple of youngsters. I think Newcastle is now effectively going to be what it's like to sign for Man City in the sense that everybody's going to want to come, yeah. which is good because yeah. it, 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 it wasn't and it hasn't been like that in Newcastle for a long, long time. Often enough, if Newcastle were offering a player £30,000 a week to sign for Newcastle, or you've got a team in London and two leagues below offering someone 15 grand a week, they'll often enough choose the team in London because of where it is. Nobody yeah. wants to live in Newcastle, they just didn't want to stay in the northeast of England. But now things are changing, it's good. I, I honestly, and I've said it in a few interviews, I really do reckon that Newcastle in the 2020s could begin to get like Manchester in the 90s and I totally stand by that in terms of we are going to end up having the best football team in the league we are producing the best music you've seen it with Sam Fender you know there's a couple of other bands that are on their way up bands like Pale White you know I'm, I'm really trying my best to do pretty well you know we've got the best accent we've got the best nightclubs <laughs> we've got the best para but no it, 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 it Newcastle's going to be a special place man it really yeah. is and you'll all be supporting you in a few years later. and that's what I'm yeah. saying everybody on this tour <laughs> and uh, I'm telling you you all will What's your favourite music venue in your hometown? This is like being in Southampton this is like we were saying earlier like one of like the most pivotal it's been here for so many years bands like Oasis and well you know everyone that's been through it or This is a pretty iconic venue like this is, this is a pretty iconic this is somewhere that um, I've wanted to headline for a while just because of the people in the bands that came through it um, in terms of Newcastle, I support there's a venue called the Clooney, which was my first ever headline. Um, first ever headline in general. I had one song out at the time, like 350 caps sold out in like five days. But like the Octa Monkeys and stuff have been through there, so that's, that's yeah. a pretty iconic venue. But there's a few, man. There's a, I think off the top of my head. I don't know, I can't really think of any off the top of my head, which is a bit weird. But there is a few. There's a few places like the Delphi and Hull. You know, the... Um, you know, the Electric Church in Blackburn, um, you know, the Welly in Hull, you know, there's, there's a few that are, you know, pretty iconic, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll just keep on going and ticking them all off. Yeah, okay, of there's places like King Touch, you know, I've, I've played in King Touch four or five times and it's nice that we're now 10 tickets away or 20 tickets away from selling the place out, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it, it, it's really a shown progression. Yeah. I've probably seen my favourites King Touch, like. Mm -hmm. But this is a close second. I do like this venue a lot, yeah. Well, that's the thing, it just goes to show how important they are, though, isn't it? In, like, boosting people, because, obviously, with everything that's happened lately, it's hard to, like, this place has really shut down so many times. Well, that's, but without yeah. places like this, you wouldn't be able to get to... But precisely, the, 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 the Leadmill and Sheffield's another one, you know? That, that, mm -hmm. that was nearly closing down after the... Um, 
the sort of lockdown and stuff early yeah. and I'm pleased that they've managed to find the funds to keep that open for a little bit longer. I mean, we're, we're, we've sold the place out on this tour, I'm really looking forward to playing there. So there's yeah. a few, man, but it does go to show how important small venues are because, I mean, they're even important to me. It's not like I'm doing thousands of tickets all over the country, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Small independent venues are still really important to me. We're, we're doing pretty well in the north of England. Um, but, you know, we're, when we come down south, there's still a lot of leg work to do and we're going to rely on those small yeah. independent venues to hopefully get rid of the next level. Right, um, talk us through what your typical night out in Newcastle would look like. Getting absolutely shit faced in every bar I can find. Yeah. Just, just the there's been a few good ones like me, me, and my pals went out with me pals are they're good drinkers, right? You all are, aren't you out there? I'm alright. I can put a bit of a shift in, but they, they were like serious drinkers. Right? They're not pissheads, are they? But they're, they're good. They're serious drinkers, and I try to keep up with them on the old on the old vodkas, right? And um, and my mother had to come pick us up at like two o'clock in the morning. And I was just like, it, it was, I like collapsed outside of some nightclub. I'm lying and like, my own blood just, oh. could, I spit my hand open. I'm just, I love you, you know, man, I love you. And he's like, my pal's pissed up and I'm just fucking stay there, will you? Guy called Liam, absolute legend, totally saved me ass. And he rang my mother and uh, my mum came out and I was like, right, get in the car. And people apparently, I don't remember thinking, people apparently were coming over to us and going, Andrew, can I get a photo with you? And my pal, bless him, was like, turn out the lads and going, are you for real? You want a photo with him in this state, yeah. man? Get away, get away now. And he totally saved me off that day. Like, so, uh, yeah, Liam, fucking fair play <laughs> for, uh, for saving us. Um, yeah, so, last, last sort of one. What's your dream venue slash country to play? My dream venue slash country? Um, I'd like to do the uh, Paradiso in Amsterdam. Like, that would be a pretty good one, too. We do pretty well in Italy, radio-wise. So we're going to go over to Italy for the first time in November and do a couple of festivals and radio shows, so that'll be really nice. That's good. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to getting to play over there because mm -hmm. um, yeah, the songs seem to go down pretty well. So I'd probably say Italy or like the sort of paradise. If it's a dream venue, Sam's King already ticked it off on his St. James's. But I'd love to do St. James's because mm -hmm. it's just... I've been a two in France since I was a baby, you know? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the pinnacle of every... If every Geordie boy's dream, or at least ninety percent of them, to, to play either football or some form of entertainment at St James's Park, so I'd love to, I'd love to have the opportunity to do a gig there. It would mean absolute world. I mean, we've done it. I played it when we've done the the rugby weekend at uh, like at half time, like thirty thousand people there. But in terms of it being my gig and just walking out in front of people singing my songs, that would just be. I, I wouldn't be able to put it in words. It would just yeah. it would mean it would mean everything. Well, well, I was actually going to ask: Is there anyone that you would love to like? Obviously, you've done your, you've met loads of people. You've done your work with Noel Gallagher. Is there anyone else that you'd sort of like, not work towards, but want to like? Yeah, I'd love to work with them. The only one that I haven't ticked off yet, who I'd really like to meet and potentially support, or you know, even just have a little bit of a sort of natter with, is probably Richard Ashcroft. Mm -hmm. I've kind of met all my other heroes: yeah. Weller, you know, Noel, Libertines. You know, Kasabian, you know, there's some great people that I've met, but in terms of what's inspired me to write songs, I I like him Ashcroft, like mm -hmm. he's a he's a dude. Yeah. Um or Beyonce. One of the two. <laughs> Another contrast. Right, that's it, we're done here. Thank you so much. No problem. Listen, thank you very, very much for having us. First ever interview. You've first, smashed it. First ever video interview. First ever video interview. That was shit again. Well done. There you go. Well, I'm <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Grab the light. And I'm sorry I take it out on the ones that breathe the closest to me. What's the point now? What's the point now? So, Bean, you're better at this than me. Do you want me to interview you? Yeah. yeah you guys are good to go. We're in Southampton at the joiners with Andrew Cushion from Newcastle. He's got no impurities. Um, right. <laughs> Impurities, is that the right word? Right, stop right. the interview, right? Fucking coming in, right? I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm sat, no, don't, don't no. say that, don't say that. Right, I'm sat at the joining us with Andrew Cushion. How are you? And then I'll fucking oh, take over. I don't need to do my job, I can't believe this. No, because you're your first job. <laughs> 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 if you be confident, I'll be confident. By the end of it, we'll have a fucking laugh, right? Let's go, go on.